Hi there and welcome to the Dawn Show. Dawn Stens Lamenti here. We are live and we are local. Today we're talking about one of the deadliest habits that you can have, smoking. According to the American Cancer Society, tobacco use remains the single largest preventable cause of disease and premature death in the United States. And yet, more than 43 million Americans are still smoking cigarettes. That amounts to one in every five adults. Now, with the Great American Smokeout happening Thursday, November 21st, we're hoping that you'll consider quitting. I know it's tough. My dad did. He quit cold turkey when I was 16 years old. And uh, knock wood, thanks to those sunflower seeds still in the shell, uh, dad has not had a cigarette for more than 20 years, so that's a good thing. So we're joined right now. Um, actually, I think we're joined by Dr. Rob Danoff, who's the program director for the Combined Family Practice and Emergency Medicine Residency Program, as well as the Family Practice Residency Program at Aria Health. And he was recently presented with the American College of Osteopathic Family Physicians 2012 Distinguished Service Award. So big congratulations to you, doctor. Oh, well, thank you. It's good to be with you, and thanks for all your work to help everyone quit smoking. Well, I grew up with uh, my brother, sister, and I. The, the only good news is when you when you grow up with a chain smoker, my brother, sister, and I, we, we hate smoking <laughs> because we grew up with all that secondhand smoke. Um, but I just think when you, when you think about it, the fact that it's so easy um, to prevent all the disease that smoking comes with, um, you know, just try not to start smoking. But if you are smoking, I, and, and because I went through um, a parent quitting, I know, I know that it is tough, and that's something we don't want to lie about, but my goodness, it adds decades to your life. Am I right, Dr. Rob? Oh, it's, it's huge. And like you, both my parents had smoked earlier on, and I remember sitting in the back of the car, and I hated the smell, so I never even wanted to try. But, you know, smoking is the number one killer in our country that's preventable. And talk about Homeland Security, you know, that's one of them. And anyone who smokes, they up their risk for heart disease, for stroke, for lung cancer. Almost all lung cancer is caused or related to cigarette smoking. So, you know, and it's really tough because you know why? It's addicting. It's both psychologically and physically addicting. So people who do smoke, it's very difficult, but we've had lots of success. And the whole key is, and what I ask people is, do you want to feel better? And if they want to feel better, that's a start to help them on their way. Yeah, and Dr. Rob, I want to ask you about the CT scans, but I will tell you that was one of the turning points for my father is that he got a cold, a bad cold, and he couldn't shake it. And so that was the final straw where he, he just said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And again, it was the sunflowers in the seeds because it still had this motion. So we, we, we felt like we lived with a, a parakeet or something for months with the sunflower with the seeds, but that did it for him. Everybody has their, their little trick. But I wanna ask you, um, Dr. Rob, about the CT scans and who should get it and explain what that's all about. Well, you know, it's very difficult to detect lung cancer. In fact, most times we detect it after the fact. Someone might come in, they've had an accident, we do a chest X-ray and we see a growth on their lungs. So we really didn't have much to detect lung cancer until recently. And you know, this past year, it's been recommended by our government, the United States Preventive Services Task Force, that any smoker who has had what we call 30 pack year history, in other words, if they've smoked one pack a day for 30 years or two packs a day of cigarettes for 15 years, and if you're in between the ages of 55 to 79, you can get a test called a CAT scan, and that can help detect if you have early stages of lung cancer. Because if we can detect it early by a CAT scan, you have a much better chance of being helped than if we detect it on an X-ray. Because by the time it shows up on an X-ray, it's really too late. And that was, we think of the, the famous ABC anchorman, Peter Jennings. He, it was too late for him. So he's a good example of Oh, my of gosh, someone. yeah. That was so sad. Yeah, you were right. Remember that when he announced it on air? Yes. I mean, it's just, so we have lots of people who smoke, and it's not easy. And, you know, they want to get better. But, you know, I've seen, and I'm sure you have, we've seen the devastation that this causes. And, and here's the thing. Even if they don't have the end stages, which could be bad bronchitis or, you know, emphysema or hopefully not, but lung cancer, it takes away years from their lives. It takes away energy. It takes away their ability to, you know, interact with people as far as running and activity. It takes away their taste, you know, and 
it's really sad what it does to people. But I would just encourage everybody through your reach and your show that if you are a smoker and if you are concerned about disease to your lungs, including lung cancer, talk to your doctor to see if a CAT scan would be good for you to check your lungs to make sure you don't have any early stages of lung cancer. And again, that's if you're between 55 to 79 years of age. Dr. Rob Danoff, thank you so much. Thanks for your great advice, thank you. And now we are joined by the Chief Medical Officer for the American Cancer Society and former New Jersey Health Commissioner, Dr. Fred Jacobs. Are you with us, Dr. Jacobs? Yes, I am, uh, thank you, yes. Uh, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and you can tell I have I have a, a, a personal sense of this um, with two aunts. My aunt Diane and my aunt Jereen both died, uh, and my aunt Sis actually three of emphysema, all smokers. And my dad, thank goodness, is coming up on uh, being 80 years old because he quit uh, when my brother and I were teenagers. And so, you know, I've lived yeah. through this and seen the effects, and I just. I know it's tough for people, but I, I just want to get the word out and talk to you doctors about it and just encourage people. If you're thinking about quitting, do it now. Well, right. That's, that's exactly right. And of course, <clears throat> tomorrow, uh, November 21st, is the Great American Smokeout, which is a great opportunity to make that resolution and to begin the process of uh, stopping cigarette smoking, because that, that is the single most important thing that individuals with lung disease or who want to prevent lung disease can do. And something else, I don't know people if, if they think about it as much, but it was, um, it has been um, deemed the cause or one of the causes of SIDS. They tell you now, don't smoke around babies, don't smoke around young children, and that secondhand smoke is something that back in the day people didn't even think about. Am I right? Yes. Well, the secondhand smoke issue is a major, major issue. And in kids, uh, the sudden infant death syndrome, of course, is one thing. Middle ear infections is, is another thing. There's maybe one, uh, almost a million uh, uh, little kids with, who, who get middle ear infections every year because they're exposed to secondhand yeah. cigarette smoke. And the, the really interesting number there is that, according to the American Cancer Society, about 43,000 American non-smokers die as a result of exposure to secondhand smoke from, from the exposure itself. So that, that's more people than die uh, you know, in traffic accidents every year in the United States. And these are people who don't smoke themselves, who are exposed, exposed to it. Now, of, of, of course, we have a marked reduction in the people who do smoke, largely because of uh, you know, shows like yours and the efforts of the American Cancer Society and, and other organizations, uh, American Heart, American Lung, uh, the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, on and on. So maybe today, um, cigarette smoking among an adult since 1965 has decreased more than 42 percent, about 19 percent nationwide. But um, about 44 Americans still smoke, and, that, and more than half of, uh, of workplaces in the U.S., still don't protect their uh, workers and uh, patrons from the effects of secondhand smoke. Only covers those smoke-free workplace laws, which we are so proud of in New Jersey, protect 49% of the U.S. population. So more than 50% are not protected. So there is a lot of work yet to do. Yeah, more than 40 million Americans. I mean, that's incredible. So tell me about Thursday, the Great American Smokeout Day. And, and for my dad who quit uh, cold turkey, he said he took it hour by hour. So we just want to share this with everybody. And I know this is some tough love. It's not something that I always talk about because I, I, I'm not trying to get into people's business, but this will save your life and maybe the life of somebody you love. The Great American Smokeout, American Cancer Society, Thursday, November 21st, you can go to cancer.org and you see there, quit for good. Uh, doctor, I wanna thank you so much, Dr. Fred Jacobs. Thanks you so much for joining us. And again, it's tough love, right, doctor? But we, we just wanna get this word out. You're right, thank you very much for having us. Thank you. And coming up next, learn what you can do to help stop family homelessness when I'm joined by the executive director of an organization that is near and dear to my heart. You're gonna love this lady.